Science. We're on a research expedition between the Zimbabwe and Zambian border. In many ways, the rivers on the African continent remain a mystery. Today, European scientists joined forces with their African colleagues in search of answers on the role played by African rivers in the global climate. Rivers naturally produce CO2, which contributes to global warming. Land use and vegetation patterns along the riverside influence this biochemistry. An international research project aims to improve our understanding of how the rivers in Africa work. We are in, uh, on the Zambezi River, uh, the fourth largest uh, river in Africa and the first uh, largest uh, river flowing into uh, the Indian Ocean. And uh, this is our uh, uh, study uh, site. Unlike the European fluvial systems that are relatively well researched, rivers in Africa have so far been poorly studied. A greater understanding would help countries like Zambia manage its water resources, responding more efficiently to growing demand. The population of the country has increased. There is also uh, an increase uh, in the economic aspect, meaning mining and other users, agriculture, electricity. And therefore, it's important to study, to know how much water we have so that uh, all these competing users could have uh, a share of what they want. Scientists measure various water parameters, including its temperature and CO2 content. This data will explain how most of the carbon entering the river with decomposed organic matter or soil minerals gets converted into gas or sediment, never reaching the ocean. At this point, uh, um, everything is more or less unknown. Um, this is why we are here, that uh, we're trying to look at the transport of, of carbon to the ocean as sedimentation processes, the, the fluxes to, to the atmosphere. We're looking at the, uh, the source of carbon and we try to, to, to understand how much, is, how much carbon in, on those rivers. Is it terrestrial and how much is it aquatic produce? When the series of measurements on the Zambezi River are complete, Christian will return to his home university in Leuven, Belgium. By that time, his assistant Frank, a master student at the University of Zambia, will have learned all the methods to make sure the research will continue after this project is officially over. The methods of sampling are, are not as easy as one would think, so they are very precise and, 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 and I've, uh, I've been very, very keen to follow and learn throughout the, the master project and I think that that is also adding to what is called capacity building. The water samples collected in Zambia are being sent to laboratories in Europe for more detailed analysis. Similar field studies also take place in Kenya, Mozambique, Niger, Gabon, Madagascar and the Congo River Basin. Measurements are taken at regular intervals along the whole length of Africa's main rivers. We expect that uh, uh, the, the, the geochemical parameters, including carbon dioxide and, and the oxygen, might change along the, uh, along the river stretch, influenced by uh, landscape, by, by the hydrology. This is why we, are, uh, uh, we, we continue sampling the, the river uh, downstream down to the Indian Ocean, the large number of, of, uh, of sampling sites. Studying the secrets of African rivers will shed new light on biochemical mechanisms shaping the global climate, helping to secure a safer future for the people on the continent.